Hi, my name is Bloodfish, and this is the second video of the circuit series. In this video, I'll focus on the specific signal strength circuit. I don't know the exact name for it, but should be similar. And also its applications, which mostly include like combination locks. So I'll also include a small summary of combination locks, maybe different types, how they can be built, and how they can be paired up with different circuits, so they can be better, I guess. So this video will technically be a combination of combination locks and also a circuit. So without further ado, let's get started. This may look fairly intimidating at first, but don't worry, it's relatively easy to understand. So if you don't want to understand the redstone, then the only thing I need to tell you, if you want to use it, is that the signal strength at the back always has to be 1 higher than the signal strength on the side. So if this is 5, then this has to be 6. So you can look at the redstone torch over here. When this is 6, it turns off. When it's 7, it turns back on. It always has to be 6, like 1 more, no more, no less. So you know, using this concept, you can split this into three different uh, situations. So when this is below six, when this is six, and when this is above six. So let's start like over here. When this is below six, when this is below six, then this subtracting comparator will subtract the side from the back. So five minus five is zero. So nothing will be outputted, and so yeah, nothing happens. But when this is six, then six minus five is one. This comparator will output a signal strength of one. This will power this comparator, which will power this block, so the redstone torch turns off. And then this comparator will also like, carry on the signal, so this is also a signal strength of 1. And then when this is 7, however, so 7 minus 5 is 2, this comparator like outputs a signal strength of 2, which will power this comparator, however you can see it doesn't work like that. So like this comparator also outputs a signal strength of 2, which will then power this repeater. Now this comparator will detect, of course, side and back. Now you can see that the back signal on the side is bigger than the signal at the back, 15 and 2. So of course this comparator will switch off and so this block will be unpowered and so the redstone torch will be on. Yeah, that's kind of hard to wrap your head around. On to building this circuit. So you can see that this can be reduced to a 2x4 space with like the inputs and outputs with the respective signs you can see. So this amount of resources, so we start the building. Remember that this comparator always has to be set to subtract mode. Then redstone dust here, redstone dust here and here. Repeater here, comparator here, and also here. Like that. And it's relatively simple, as you can see. As for the input for the specific signal strength circuit, we have two different types. There's one on the side, which will be the one to store your combination lock. And then the one at the back, which will be the one that you like manipulate physically, so you can have a corresponding uh, signal strength to the one on the side, thus unlocking your circuit. So for the one at the back, you would have to have one that's more flexible. You can change the signal strength very easily. So for this case, I recommend using a lectern or an item frame. This is because they d display the correspondent uh, signal strength outputted really clearly. So like in this case, like when it's on page six, it will output a signal strength of six. And then like, when the torch is in this position, it's like position 2, it will output a signal strength of 2. Now for a more permanent solution, if you just want to store your combination lock, you can use a chest because not many people know like whatever signal strength will be outputted depending on the items inside the chest. So like, you can use this tactic so not many people know whatever like this signal strength will be outputting at, so it's hard to guess your combination lock by then. And then we have cake. I don't know why this is on the list. It's not very useful. It's not replenishable. And you need a supporting block for it, so it's not very useful. And then we have a composter and a cauldron, which both need external items to change the signal strength. So for this, you would need like an, a water bucket or a glass bottle to change the signal strength. And then for this, you would need like some vegetation, like carrots or potatoes, to fill up the um, composter so it will change the signal strength. But like in general, I just recommend using this lectern for the side and back outputs because it's a lot more convenient. And we move on to the more application side for the specific signal strength circuit. In our first scenario, you can see that this uh, circuit is being used as a lock to a piston door. So we just like turn this book a few, few times, it opens up the piston door. Now, of course, like this can be used as like a entrance to a secret base, maybe a secret vault, an uh, armory a secret enchantment room, whatever, and also like even a puzzle room. So you have to like complete an objective like to like solve the puzzle room and then go to the next room like that, like for adventure maps. And then for our next example, we have a more sophisticated version of a vault. So like for simplicity, I just already have this set as the default uh, combination like this. So we have access to our chests. 
Now how this works of course like is like are these combination locks but we also have a logic gate which is the AND gate. So here's a small diagram just to show how it works. So we want to have this redstone torch turn on. So how to do this is that we need both of these redstone torches to turn off so like this will turn on. So even if like one of these is like still on this will not turn on like that. Like same goes for these. We have to like activate or deactivate both of these combinations in order for this AND gate to work and so the pistons can retract. Personally, I'm not a fan of combination locks because if you're in a multiplayer server, people can like, they see where a combination lock is, so they know where the entrance is so they can just break into it without solving your combination. And like, so I'd rather use a hidden activation device and also a hidden vault. But anyways, I did say that this video would be a mixture between a combination lock and also a circuit, so here's an example of a combination lock. So the combination lock used here is an AND gate, so these two levers have to be in the correct position. So if I just press this button, the door will activate just like that. However, if the locks were in an incorrect combination, then this will activate another logic gate, which is called the RS Norlatch, which will activate an alarm uh, attached to a dispenser failing, because that's a very annoying sound. So, like, the combination lock uses this logic gate called a RS Norlatch, a diagram like this. So, basically, how this works is that if I press this button, and this activates the alarm. I can't deactivate this alarm by pressing this button again. I have to like press this button again, this button, so like it resets the system. So same goes here. If I were to try and de deactivate this, I try to press the button, nothing happens. So I have to press this button in order for it to deactivate. It's very simple. And then why does it like why does this simple like this uh, contraption work when this piston is retracted or extended? Well, it's because of soft powering. So when this piston is retracted, then you can see that this pulse will be sent towards the block, so this block will be soft powered and then the repeater will be able to get an output from this, but this redstone line will not be able to get an output from it because it's a soft powered block, it doesn't transmit like vertically like that. However, if this piston was like that, then the redstone wouldn't be able to reach this repeater and it would just like, because like the piston arm is invisible, it's like able to go down from this block to this block and thus activating this RS Norwich and so this um, can activate the alarm. And of course, like this can like not just be attached to an alarm, this can also be attached to like other traps, so like anti-invader traps like TNT, which uh, would blow up your base, so I don't recommend that either. On to the final part of the video where I discuss different variants of the combination lock and also another version of the specific signal strength circuit. So this circuit actually has a name, it's called a red coder. So if I were to just turn this item around, you can see that the comparator will output a signal strength that will activate a respective redstone torch like that. So yeah, it just like progressively goes on and on. So how does it work? If I were to just reset this back to signal strength of 1, you can see that this comparator will output a signal strength of 1. So this repeater will be able to detect this output here, and so will hard power this block, thus turning this redstone torch off. So this block will be unpowered, so this redstone torch will be on. However, if I were to just like turn this to a signal strength of 2, now the signal strength here will extend up to here, and so like this red repeater will be powered, and so will hard power this block, which was originally unpowered, so therefore this redstone torch will switch off. But you can also see that the process will be continued, that like this uh, signal strength will be extended over here, which will then power a repeater down here, and then like this cycle starts again like that. In front of me, I have three different combination locks. So the first one is easy to understand, it's just an AND gate, so we just have to have these three levers in the correct position for this to deactivate just like this. And then for the second combination lock, we have an item frame combination lock, so we just have to have the correct combination like that. I don't want to remember all the combinations, so it's just there for simplicity. You can also see that the layout of this combination mechanism is similar to that of an, a red coder. It's similar with a zigzaggy shape, like that, I guess. <laughs> And you may also ask, why is there a chest here? Well, it's to divert the redstone signal. So if I were to just like remove the chest and update this redstone repeater, you can see that this is on. But this is not what we want. We want this redstone dust to activate this repeater, and this redstone dust to activate this repeater, not when this redstone dust to activate this repeater. So how do we fix this? We just divert the signal, like this. So now if we like update this again, you can see that this redstone repeater is off. And the final combination lock is rather interesting, you require some rhythmic sense to unlock it. So you can see that these two no blocks are being observed by observers and like there is a two tick delay like for this cir circuit. 
So meaning that you have to hit this uh, note block two ticks before this one. So like both redstone torches will turn off at the exact same time. So this will turn on and so we'll create a brief period of which the door will like open like this and we just go into the door like that. And then we have different um, circuits to synergize with the specific signal strength circuit. So as showcased before, this is an AND gate. We just have to have these two redstone torches turn off so this can turn off. And then we also have an RS nor latch, so if you want to like turn this on and like press this again, we can't. We have to press this, and we can't press this again until we press this, and like so on and so forth. And yeah, different variants. And thus, the end of the second circuit video on the specific signal strength circuit, and also a summary of compilation locks. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something, and if you were like seeking to find something more interesting, this is not the place since like this video is merely educational. But if you want something interesting, here's a joke. Your life. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.